Welcome to my kitchen and thank you for joining me. I'm going to go through some recipes here and teach you how to make simple, healthy, family friendly meals that are available from ingredients in your kitchen and your pantry. I'm going to start with some of the basics. These are recipes that I've been teaching to my grade 9 food nutrition class for over 28 years. So we're going to start today with the basic of making some oatmeal raisin cookies. First step in anything you do when you prepare in the kitchen, make sure you're ready for proper hygiene. So hair should be tied back, you should have an apron on to protect anything from falling into the food. And as well, we need to make sure we always wash our hands before beginning. Next step in the process is to make sure that you always have your ingredients out and ready before you begin. Worst thing you want to happen is we part with your recipe and find you don't have an ingredient and you can't continue. So take inventory, get everything out that you need so that you're ready to start cooking. So for our oatmeal raisin cookies, um, we need to have our oven preheated to 350 degrees. And the first thing we should start with is getting our dry ingredients ready. And then after that, we'll work on blending and creaming our other ingredients, which we'll then gradually add our dry ingredients to. So for our dry ingredients, we need three cups of oats. Now measuring of oats is fairly simple. You just need to put your measuring cup onto a plate so if you spill, your mess is easy to clean up. You pour the oats into the measuring cup until they are slightly overflowing. Using a straight edge, level off the oats. So there's one cup. Two cups. Next, we are going to be adding one cup of all-purpose flour. So flour, when you're measuring it, you want to give your spoon or your scoop a little bit of shake as you're putting the flour in, because flour should be added lightly to the measuring cup. Never ever packed. Don't ever pack it or bang the cup um, because then you're actually going to end up with too much flour in there. Then of course we level with a straight edge and we add that to our oatmeal mixture. Then we're going to add a half teaspoon of baking soda. So baking soda, when we're measuring, we can just scoop into the box and use the cardboard edge to level our measuring spoon and add that in. And then we need one teaspoon of cinnamon. Again, I can just level using my container. And then I need a half teaspoon of salt. Make sure you measure your salt over another plate or other container so that we don't accidentally put in too much salt. Now, these ingredients can be just gently stirred together with just a regular spoon to 
combine them well. So then, in a large mixing bowl, we're going to combine one cup of butter softened. You can use margarine if you'd like. Um, I prefer the flavor of butter in my cookies, so I took out some butter earlier so it could soften. You don't want to use it hard from the refrigerator. It'll be very difficult to mix, so it does need to come out and sit for a while to get acclimatized to the temperature of the room. To that, we are going to be adding one cup of packed brown sugar. So to measure packed brown sugar, we're going to be putting the sugar into the measuring cup and each time you add a scoop, you're going to push it down with your spoon to make it firmly packed. Just like when you were a kid at the beach playing with your sand castles. Okay, fill it just slightly overflowing, then use your straight edge to level. And then if you've measured this correctly, it should take the shape of your measuring cup. Alright, so now, using an electric mixer, we are going to beat these two ingredients together until they are light and fluffy. Now, always start on a lower speed so that everything doesn't fly up in your face. You want to begin to incorporate ingredients gently so they start to blend as one. stop when that first comes together as a mass and it's all blended but that's really not enough mixing you need to actually beat it longer until it's light and fluffy and you should actually see the dough change color and it should actually lighten in color so we're gonna mix it some more
Okay, so there we go. It is mixed better and is actually lightened in color and is a lot more fluffy than it was before. All right, um, to this we're now going to add an egg and some vanilla. I just need to grab my rubber scraper so I can scrape down the sides of the bowl here. Always important to scrape down the sides as you're mixing with an electric mixer. If you have a stand mixer, even better, because then you can scrape down a lot easier. So to this, we're going to add an egg. Now when you're adding eggs to your mixture, you should always crack your egg into a small dish size of a custard cup. That way, little pieces of shell like just fell in this cup. Uh, don't get actually into your mixture. And also, if the egg happens to be off or had a blood spot, you're not going to end up putting that into your dough that you've already made. And it's a lot easier to pull a shell out of this cup than out of the dough. So I'm going to add that in. And we're going to add one, sorry, two teaspoons of vanilla. So there's one. And there's two. And then using your electric mixer, you're going to beat this until it's even lighter and fluffier. Now we are going to add in our dry ingredients that we measured already. So pour about half of what's in that bowl and give it a stir. Blend it in. If you pour all of it in at once, it just makes it a little bit harder to mix in. So if you add it in gradually, it just makes your job a little bit easier. Of 
this is your basic oatmeal cookie. Now I'm going to add raisins to this, uh, but you could, if you prefer, use chocolate chips. Uh, you could use craisins. You could put nuts in it. Uh, just make sure your proportion stays to just one cup of extra ingredient that you're adding in or else your mix will become too crumbly and too difficult to work with. Okay, so last ingredient to add in is our one cup of raisins. I need just a little bit bigger bowl. <laughs> Make sure your surface is clean that you're putting your cookie sheet onto. Otherwise, that stuff will stick to the bottom of your pan and will start to burn as soon as you put it in the oven. Okay. To put the cookie dough onto the tray, just take a spoonful of dough. Use another spoon to push it off. Don't go like whack or anything like that. You don't need to roll them. You really want to try and handle food with your hands as little as possible. Try and be consistent with the size of your cookies. You don't want really big ones and really small ones because they're all going to be in there at the same baking time, so you want even baking for each of them. This recipe should make about three dozen cookies. All right, so 12 will fit on this tray just nicely. So one more. Okay, the recipe says to bake for eight to 10 minutes. Generally, whenever a recipe gives you a time frame, always go for the shorter time frame to begin with, and then you can add more time on when you check them. So these into the oven and set my timer for eight minutes. All right, looks like our cookies are just about done. So 
you know the cookies are done when they have a nice golden color to the edges of them and the tops of them are set they're not all soft um, they will have a little bit of give to them um, but you don't want them gooey in the center you should leave them on the tray for only about a minute and then you need to remove them quickly to a cooling rack um, or else they will stick to your tray and you'll have a hard time getting them off. But you do need to give them a little chance. Um, if they're stuck together, just use your spatula to separate them from one another. All right, so they've been uh, out for about a minute and we'll just move these to the cooling rack. have some oatmeal raisin cookies. I like to always freeze my cookies when I bake them because they help with portion control. Uh, it's too tempting when you have a nice full cookie jar to eat you know five or six of them whereas if you put them in the freezer you're more likely to just grab maybe one or two and spread them out over a period of time. Thank you for joining me in my kitchen and I hope you enjoy making your oatmeal raisin cookies.